Okay, so we're going to uh, talk today about a topic that's that's come up here, um, and it is the topic about coverage testing. This is a topic which is going to follow us for the next few lectures, and it fits into the issue of test design. You remember what we talked about last time? Test design is about coming up with concrete test cases to exercise code, right? Um, and when we say concrete, I mean they are fully specified to the level needed to execute them. So if you're testing a function, you specify the values of the arguments that function. If you're testing part of the system through its GUI, through its graphical user interface, you're very specific about what you press button-wise, when you press it, what you enter for fields, exactly what you choose from drop-downs. It's completely specified, so it's completely reproducible. Completely, it can be redone. And why is it important that it's reproducible? So we can revisit the problem later if it shows up? Yeah, if it, if it, if it causes, if it shows a failure, if it shows a problem, you know, you get a message box saying, you know, there's been a timeout, or if the system hangs, or if the system crashes with a stack trace, you can reproduce it. You want it to be fully specified, and, and that's why I'm saying concrete test cases. And because at the end of the day, you always need some sort of thing. I mean, if there's a drop down, you gotta pick something out of it, even if it's just leave it as default value. So that level of specificity is needed to really provide guidance about what to do. Test design, and one of the elements of test design is about picking intelligent test cases. Why do we pick intelligent test cases? Because we don't have time to do all possible test cases. And what limited time we have, we want to devote to find, to doing ones that are likely to show, to show errors. We're, we, wanted, we want to undertake test cases that are in some sense judicious or intelligent because they're going to be more likely than not to show errors. We talked about this last time, didn't we? In, in a certain way. What do, we, what do we give the example of last time? Uh, orthogonal testing and testing a bunch of fields. Yeah, so testing fields or testing a, a function. If you have something like square root, remember we argued that it makes sense to, to test at least, test it with at least one positive number that's not a exact square. But once you start testing it with a bunch, it starts becoming diminishing returns. Each, each success of one offers limited value because probably the errors that would show up for one of them would show up for the errors as, for the others as well, right? You want to probably do at least one perfect square because you want to see if it still works well for that. You want to try zero and one because there might be problems there. The point is you pick intelligently about what to test. In this coverage testing work that we're going to be talking about is all about that. Now, this is a model-based technique. And because of the time is short, I don't have time to, to go into this uh, in as much detail as I'd love to. But basically, a lot of software development benefits from what I would call models, which are simplifications of reality. They're simplifications, they boil things down to their essence. A model which you folks gave me last time was the prototype. You showed it to me, right? It didn't have all the features of the real system, but it had a lot. And it boiled them down to an easy to use sort of system where I could test it, look, at least to look and feel. Another example is something Jesse gave me, which is the test matrix. And I could quibble about some details, but basically it boiled down tests into, you know, there are tests, there are things that they test, and it gave me an understanding of them, right? So models help convey understanding. And a lot of what we're going to be talking about in the next few lectures is, is, is these models. We're going to be talking about models like this, models like that. Models that depict a system operation, okay? Um, going from lots of details of code to something like this. 
these are models. They, abs they abstract a lot away a lot of detail from a lot of detail, but capture the essence of the situation in a, uh, a fairly simple way. So in the course of these lectures, we're going to see a number of models. One is the test matrix. We saw it with orthogonal ray testing, where we have these different possibilities we saw last time, right? We have these different these different possibilities of, of um, combinations of things. Remember this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, we, where we had different variables, right? Um, decision trees, we saw that a bit last time. Flow graphs, we're going to be seeing a lot, and we might get into uh, to Boolean decision criteria. Now, there's this term coverage testing, which is sometimes used as if it's just one thing. In fact, it's, there's many faces of it. There's state-based, statement-level coverage. Jay mentioned statement-level coverage statistics. There's transition coverage. There's something called prime path coverage. And, and a bunch of other levels that we'll talk about. And, and these levels, it turns out, are arranged in a hierarchy. Have you folks taken three, sorry, four? Have you taken a course that talks about formal languages and uh, models of computation, things like uh, finite automata, push down automaton, or grammars, um, Turing machines? Grammars only. We had it in the second half. 360. Okay, so there's a bit of it there. There's another course, I think it's like 464 or something like that, which goes into it in more detail. Um, but it turns out there and here, there are these hierarchies of testing coverage where, for example, if you do things at a transition level, you're covering everything you do with state-based coverage, but also more for, for most practical cases. Okay, so within these sorts of coverage we're basically reasoning about a system as a series of nodes and edges and we have to achieve coverage within this coverage in the sense that we hit a number of the items in this structure sometimes the items are the states just like that doesn't have to make that sound but it's you know it hits them okay um, in other cases, what we're trying to hit is the transitions here, okay? These are not the same. Uh, it turns out transitions provide stronger guarantees than states. You might get to a state, for example, through many transitions, and transition coverage requires hitting all of those transitions, not just hitting the state once, okay? So for example, um, this state we can get into either this way or this way, or this way. And transition coverage would require you hit all three. State coverage would require you just to enter via some way. Okay? Um, similarly for, for state coverage. Now, you'll notice that these systems are illustrated here at a high level. This is a description. Anyone want to say what is this a description of? Some sort of ATM yeah. functionality. That's right. So it's a it's a bank machine. It's an automatic teller machine, um, and uh, these things were born before you were. Um, uh, I remember them from the mid '80s um, and, and, and before, uh, and uh, they are fairly simple machines. But they, their basic functionality can be diagrammed out. These are states that they can be in. And then there are transitions between states. Most of these states are associated with a user interface of some sort, right? So if you're waiting for the pin, there's a special thing on the screen that allows you to enter your pin, right? Um, with those metal buttons sometimes they have, right? Um, or, you know, there's a certain thing. If it ejects the card, the card sits there and you have to grab it, right? So. These, are these states are typically associated with user input, and the transitions mean you go from one of those states to another, right? Familiar thing. Here, we're illustrating the process of purchasing a ticket, and actually this is particularly in older times where we had a distinction 
particularly strong distinction between paper and tickets versus if it's just uh, it's it's merely paid for. These days, you can pay for things but not be ticketed, but it's less uh, it's less common. Okay, um, and we're going to talk about different levels of coverage, like state coverage versus transition coverage. Or transition coverage is it more detailed or less detailed than state coverage? More, more. more detailed. Yeah. Um, systems of all different sorts can be diagrammed in this way. And one of the advantages of diagramming them is you can recognize the opportunities to test more thoroughly. You can, in some sense, come up with guidance. Well, you can come up with guidance on how, where are the gaps in my testing and how could I test more thoroughly. For example, if you are testing an ATM machine, suppose you work for a manufacturer of ATM machines, could you really pass the red face test and say you tested this machine if you had never tested a situation where the card was ejected following some, you know, following insufficient funds or something? You know, it'd be hard to argue to your boss, this thing is ready to ship if you haven't tested that because maybe there's a bug there. You know, when insufficient funds are available, maybe it just sucks them out of the account anyway. <laughs> just sucks them out and gives the money to the person. Maybe it gives them money to the person who's waiting without debiting the account. That would be not good for the bank, and they wouldn't want to buy your machines particularly, right? So here, a lot of the uses of these diagrams are to recognize cases of insufficient testing where we need to test more. Does that make sense? Like, where are our gaps? Just like, as in Jesse's test matrix, we can recognize gaps, given functions that are tested by no test. Here, we can recognize gaps in terms of, have we reached a certain point? Now, your app, what might these states be? So open the app. Yeah. Scan the QR code. Good. It could either fail or work. Good. Yeah. Um, if it works, it'll pull from the database. Yeah. And there's two things. If it's Good. there or if it isn't. So mm -hmm. like the actual QR scan it fails or if it fails from getting from the database. Yep. Yeah. Then it'll go to the card, show the card on the screen. Yeah. And it just keeps going. <laughs> Good, good. And so often you'll have different screens on the app or yeah, different, different you know, different buttons showing, right? And I would argue actually you want to expand that description, which is quite good, a little bit more because probably if you, if it looks up the QR code, you want different messages, not just if it succeeds or fails, but if it succeeds versus it fails that it's not found in the yeah, system or maybe it can't connect at all. Yeah. It's like... Please try again later. Yeah. You know, um, so so the point is, you could easily create this for your system, and you could think to what degree if we covered this graph for our system, right? To what degree have we reached all these states, and maybe to what degree have we actually hit all transitions, right? Like to what degree have we achieved it through a timeout? So what degree if we test that a case versus a case where it's just not in the database? Okay, um, now it turns out that these same basic approaches can be applied not just at this black box level, this high level like we were just talking about. They can be applied at the statement level where these are statements in, well, in your cases, it would be JavaScript, right? For React Native. You have cases like if statements or while statements, and you can diagram out the paths associated with them. And here, you have different bits of code. This is the code. Where is this code? Where is this code? In this. Yeah, it's inside the if. This is testing if this condition is true. If it is true, it goes this way. If it doesn't true, it isn't true, it goes this way. What do you think N2 is here? Whatever they're returning. Whatever is after this, yeah. And similarly, this guy here, where is it in this code over here? Where? While. Yeah, it's inside the while. It keeps going like this. So we can diagram out code in general 
in these sorts of diagrams, and then we can ask for statement level coverage or transition coverage. This is done all the time. One of, some of my earliest experiences as a professional software developer um, were with interacting with developers doing this sort of testing, where they, they would basically have an algorithm, a core algorithm. One I remember particularly clearly was um, the core algorithm in my, Microsoft Excel to get it to recalculate the spreadsheet if you change something. It would recalculate the right places in the spreadsheet. So you change a number, and there's other things that depend on it through formulas, right? And those things get recalculated. So they had a core algorithm. It was called FDUADDEP, but which which was doing this. Uh, this uh, it, it was articulated at a level of low-level code, and they had to test it, and they needed to test each branch. We want to test at least once where it goes this way, once where it goes that way, to make sure it works correctly. Because if we don't... <laughs> It's just like that ATM I argued earlier. If you don't, maybe someone has a spreadsheet somewhere and it won't recalculate the bottom line of the company. <laughs> you, you change you know, some assumption about costs and it doesn't update the bottom line and the company gets bad information, incorrect information about its profitability. That would be disastrous, right? And so you need to be sure it's working properly. And so you end up doing testing at a very detailed level. Did we hit this? Did we at least once circulate around here? Do we, you know, go that way? Well, okay. Um, okay, now all these coverage methods that I'll be talking about basically fall into a few steps. Very commonly, I have a question on this on the final exam. What are the three steps within coverage testing? And this slide gives you exactly the right answer to it. I'd be surprised if it's not on the final exam. Okay, first of all, we identify the sets of things we want to cover. Are we trying to cover here nodes? If so, we enumerate them. Are we trying to cover here transitions? If so, we want to cover them. We want to enumerate them. So we, we, we get clarity about wh what are the set of things, particular ones, we need to cover, we need to hit, mm -hmm. and flowing through the system. So maybe for you, it's screens within your app, or maybe it's instead transitions within your app, right? Okay, secondly, this is, this is actually for, for um, paths, I'll be particularly clear about this. You develop s kind of scenarios, w ways you would make your way through the system that you cover those things. So maybe you want to cover the screens in your app. You figure out a use case, a particular scenario where the user does this, does that, and walks through the system to hit a certain set of screens, okay? In any one of these, they don't have to hit all screens, but collectively, you have this scenario and this one and this one and this one, and collectively, they have to hit all the screens. So you have a couple of use cases, maybe. This use case, all you only hit the three major screens of correct operation. This other use case is a power user hits these things. This other use case is a really unlucky user has a connection disconnected, and he scans a QR code that's bad, etc., and hits the balance the others of the screens and collectively all those scenarios hit the screens does that make sense okay finally and this is where the rubber meets the road extra much you develop a set of concrete test cases by concrete test cases I mean for each of those screens you specify exactly what to do exactly what to do that cover all these paths, that realize these scenarios. So I said earlier that maybe four scenarios, this unlucky user, this power user, this kind of only the simplest ones being covered, for example. But for each of those, you've got to figure out, okay, what exactly are they doing on each screen? What exact things are they doing? For your app, it's not terribly complex as the current functionality would suggest, right? 
but they're scanning a particular barcode for sure. It's not just they scan an invalid barcode. It's like this barcode, you know, and it shows a picture of my face. And, and you know, it, the app exhibits displeasure after seeing my face, right? Just like you may, the final exam, um, <laughs> right? Uh, and, uh, or they scan this QR code, which is a valid QR code, but it's not one in the database. Mm -hmm. um, so they're actually having exactly a certain thing done at each step of the way. This is kind of abstract, it's kind of high level. They scan a, a barcode that's not in the system. In the concrete test case, it's like they scan this barcode. And that's the barcode you will use in testing it on an ongoing basis, okay. Um, okay, so for path-based testing, which we're gonna be covering, basically you're going to find paths through the system like this paths through the system paths through through here these are three abstract paths here's one path through the system notice it's from start to finish start to finish start to finish these are three abstract paths oh oh um, there three abstract paths okay and concrete they would actually enter like some very particular information. I buy a ticket, you know, with for this day, with this name, using this seat, whatever, this fare code, etc. Okay, so we're going to come up with paths that will cover all the things we want to cover, and then we're going to find some specific test cases. So imagine you're testing at this level. This, ladies and gentlemen, is in C, right? This is something which basically goes and, and takes a URL and turns it into regular text. What do I mean by that? What's, why do you have to go back and forth sometimes between a URL and regular text? Like what, what's different about a URL than, than regular text? Suppose I, I want to have a URL that has a space in it because the, the HTML file has a space in it. How does that appear in the URL? Anyone know? Underscore. Mm, good, good guess. It's, it's actually, it doesn't appear as a space. That's the key thing. What does it appear as though? Percent sign. Percent two zero. I don't know. <laughs> Why two zero? What is two zero in hex? hex? Yes, it's oh, hex. It's, it's 32, <laughs> which is the ASCII character encoding of space. That's close. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I, I'm sorry, plus is space, excuse me. Um, you can do it with 30, it, with percent two O as well. But like a dash, maybe you do percent whatever a dash is or whatever. So basically in URLs, they encode with with these special characters, um, actual text. And this decodes them. You notice it handles a plus and a percent sign differently, okay? And basically we're gonna go through and have a way of, of testing that code. We're gonna turn it into a graph like this. So we wanna test this, just like John Nikponsky back in the 80s, we wanna test each transition here. Well. To map that out, we we create a graph which represents it, and then we reason about how are we going to hit this transition or that transition, right? We're going to have a set of paths through here that which collectively hit all transitions, and then we got to figure out the very particular test cases that are going to do that. So first, I'm going to figure out, okay. You know, I'm gonna have one scenario, so it's gonna go down here, go down here, go down here, and it's gonna come back up here and then go out this way. That's one scenario. That's one abstract scenario. That's what I mean by this guy. Another abstract scenario might do this, 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 
this and go that way. Another abstract scenario might be this, come down here, boom, right? And collectively, they're gonna need to cover all, say, transitions. Someone else may say, well, I don't need transitions, I want statements. Jay, earlier, had mentioned statement coverage. Remember that? He enunciated from this very seat, 73% statement coverage. I heard him clearly. Statement coverage would be about hitting these statements. And that's weaker than transition coverage, but it's good. And you folks will need to decide, are you shooting at any one time for transition coverage, which is stronger, or statement coverage? Now, I mentioned you're, you're finding these paths through the system, but to realize that path, to get a path to go like this, to go this particular way, I need to be quite clever. What do I need to do? This way. To get a path to do this, what do I need to do? Or to get a path to do this one, what do I need to do? You need to have a certain case that will um, break the wow immediately. Yeah, so under what condition would it come down this way and go this way? It'd still have to be decoded, wouldn't it? Or it'd have to still be, well, have to be encoded. Okay, but this while, it can go either towards this code if, if this is true, or that way if it's false. So under what case would this be false? If E pointer points to something that's what? Not encoded. Yeah, that's null. That That's the last, I don't, you folks took C in 115? Eight years ago. A long time ago? That was Do you remember in between that and 214, did you learn that strings in C are zero terminated? They're null terminated? They end with zero? I think so, but it's so far. <laughs> okay, okay, well, take it from me, okay? <laughs> I've written hundreds of thousands of lines of C code, so I, I would know. C++ got about 300,000 and then other C code. So coming down this way, if it's the last character in the string, it will go this way. If it's not the last character, star E pointer will not be, E pointer will not be pointing to something at zero and it will go this way, okay? And so basically we need to come up with particular test cases that will test the paths we want. And here we go. One would be one that just has a space in it. Another is one that has test. Each of these test cases like this, we feed this thing a uh, encoded string for this, this guy here, this first one, and it will go a certain way. It will go, I think this is meant to be empty here. So it'll go like this, and it'll go down here and it'll be done. This guy, which way will this guy go? If I give it the string as encoded as test, which way will it go? It'll go true, won't it? Yeah, it'll go true, and then what will happen? Is it plus? Is this is, is the first character of this plus? No, so it'll go to false. It'll go to false. And then it'll say, hey, is it a percent, is it a percent sign? Is that, is that first character a percent sign? No. No. So it'll go false. It'll go through here, it'll come down here. And now it goes to point to the next character. And then it checks all the characters. And, yeah, and now which way is it going to go here? Well, through all the way through, it'll go false, false. It'll keep on going false. It'll keep on going false, because none of them is a... None of them is a plus or, or a, a percentage. That's right. And so it'll keep on going through, boom, 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 boom. And eventually, it will reach the end of the string where the starry pointer is zero, and it will go this way, and it'll be done, right? right? So each of these test cases is getting it to go on a certain path. Do you, do you grok that? Each of these test cases, and in fact, we're designing these test cases to make it go a certain way, to make it follow a certain path, because we've chosen a set of paths that collectively will reach all the things we want to reach. So maybe we want to reach all of these blocks for statement coverage. We want to reach all these blocks, A, B, C, D, E. We pick a set of, we pick 
paths that will cover all the blocks, and then we pick a set of test cases that will get those, will realize those paths, will get those paths to be exercised, will get it to go the way the path needs it to go. Does that make sense? So we pick test cases cleverly that will get it to go a certain way. Does that make sense? Yes. So that when we do that, those test cases will get it to cover all the paths that we want to cover, and those paths collectively will reach all of these blocks. Or, alternatively, reach all of the transitions. Does that make sense? And so this is what we're trying to do when we're trying to explicitly achieve a certain level of coverage. Jesse. Right. So this is kind of naive, but we could feasibly write a word or some yep. sort of words that would cover all these in one while loop. Like we could have something. That's like right. A percentage. That's right. Not a percentage we, we, could, we could come up with a... And, and let's try doing that. What the heck? We could come up with a scenario. By right. scenario here, do, 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 an abstract scenario. I mean a path from start to finish that would reach all these things, right? right. Watch this. Watch this. If this were on a whiteboard, I could I could do it up. But boom, 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 boom. Um, we'll go first with that. Whoa. Sorry. Sorry. Then we'll come back this way. Okay, we already hit all these guys, but I have to hit this guy again. That's no penalty. I mean, it's not a bad thing. Then I could go, let's say, this way, but go this way, because I already went that way at that other time, so I don't need to go that way. Go this way, and I haven't gone to either of these yet, so I'll have to do that. And then I could do it again, going this way, and then going this way, right? go again, and then I could get it to go this way, and go again, and then I could get it to go like this, and I'm done, right? right? Now, I could then come up with a test case that would get it to do that, right? right. It's one honking long test case, right? It's one long string, right. but it would reach all these places, right? right? And it would achieve in that one string coverage. Of all of these, all of these particular blocks, and that would be acceptable. Now, is it possible that that could be a disadvantage that it's or an advantage that it's all one? Uh, there are some cases where maybe it would be better to do them. Let's put it this way: give me a reason. It might actually be nicer, although we could have one string to rule them all with apologies to Tolkien. Um, uh, why might it be actually advantageous to, to have these as separate strengths? Because if it takes the last one in your, the one that rules them all, you'll have to go through the whole thing to get to the last one. Okay. So a lot of time wasted. Okay. Because if you're doing like an if, mm -hmm. you have to be like if this, mm -hmm. this, this, this. Okay, imagine if this is all automated C code. This runs whip fast. But imagine if this involves someone clicking on things <laughs> and they just want to test one thing. They just want to, maybe there's a bug fix. Maybe Mo fixed a bug um, in his code, if he doesn't mind me positing such a scenario. And Jesse wants to test quickly is that bug fixed now? Maybe doing a really long thing where he spends. 15 minutes in this app doing things before finally getting to the thing that was fixed wouldn't be that efficient. Also, if there were an error in a big long sequence to be tested, it might be harder to figure out where it was. Right. Whereas if you, if you had small strings that each tested a small subset of these, it might be easier to see, oh, there's been a failure there it had to have been a problem in, in just this path here. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so often we would like to be able to pick a set of test cases that we more fine-grained, more, more specific to sub-pieces of the system. Does that make sense? Because then if one fails, 
we're clear about where the problem might lie. Right, Jesse? You, you could give a bug report which would be more specific about it, it narrows it down to a, to a small area. And more than that, it's fairly quick to test if it's a human test. Jesse doesn't have to do as much to make sure, oh, now it works. Whereas if it's one string to rule, one sequence to rule them all, that's thousands of clicks in length. It could actually be even hard if it's manual for Jesse to correctly do it because he could mess up on the 663rd click and then he'd have to restart, which, which could cause him to exhibit displeasure. Right? And I'm not jesting. Um, okay. So, uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is one reason we might not prefer one sequence, but rather have a bunch of different sequences that collectively achieve coverage. Right. So, I guess my second question is, what if mm. we have an optional, like, super sequence that kind of does everything mm -hmm. and a bunch of sub-sequences? Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. That, that's great. I mean, I think your question shows... Um, good thought about this situation because you're absolutely right. We have this option of doing a super sequence and, and, and very specific sequences. Maybe sometime we just want to run it through the ringer. We want to do a test that's comprehensive. Right. Just test it out, see if it works, particularly if it's automated, right? right? Set it going and, you know, 10 minutes later, it's done all of the tests. It's done the entire test you know, collectively through it. And that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, time is out for today, but we're going to be going on to talk about these, to talk about some limitations, and then talk about next time what's called a subsumption hierarchy, which has to do with the fact that we can achieve different levels of coverage, and higher levels of coverage will subsume lower ones, meaning everything that's covered at the lower level is still covered, but we're covering at least or, or almost always more than that. We're covering a broader set of things, okay? So we're going to be talking about that in working upwards to prime path coverage as a very, as a very rigorous type of, of, of testing technique. But I was delighted to hear Jay's utterance earlier that he's able to achieve uh, reports on node coverage out of the build using Jest and functions. This is a good start on an important road to head down. Okay? That's all for right now. I value the time that we had to talk about issues, talk about feedback, and how to address it. And I'd be glad to, um, to talk more about that uh, either now or uh, uh, at a time um, that we meet on, on Thursday or office hours. Okay? Very good. Any, 